hi everyone hope you all doing well welcome back to our channel this will be the second video for log analytics workspace series and this will be a complete detailed video because there are so many things that i'm going to cover in this particular video now if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video i have discussed about the basics related to log analytics workspace what are the log formats and what is the data structure uh, for the log analytics workspace itself Whereas in this video, I'm going to showcase how you can create a workspace, how to manage commitment tiers uh, for the log analytics workspace, how exactly the costing process works, what is retention period, how many types of retention exist, how to manage schema for each and every table that gets created in a workspace, then how to monitor health for a workspace itself and a complete portal walkthrough for the remaining set of options on the portal itself okay let's begin by creating a log analytics workspace itself now for all obvious reasons a log analytics workspace is an azure resource and that will be created inside a resource group so the instance name that you are choosing for a workspace must be unique to that particular resource group altogether and from access standpoint you must be having at least contributor privilege so for this particular demo, I have a subscription uh, named as a Visual Studio in which I have a resource group concepts work log analytics and I'm using an account which is having owner permission for the entire subscription itself. So there is no issue of access and I'm going to create a workspace named as security audit. So what you see now is one of my browser where I've signed into portal.azure.com and now I'm just going to search for log analytics workspace. Once I am at this particular console, you can see I already have multiple workspace created, but now I'm going to click on create to create a new workspace. Okay. Now the first option that you see over here is the subscription. And as you can see, my subscription is already selected. So now I'm going to select the resource group, which is this one, which is concepts work hyphen log analytics. Now I'm going to name this instance as security audit. And as you can see, the check is completed and I can proceed. Now, selecting a region is very important because this is something which can help you save a lot of egress cost, even though you have resources in Azure itself. OK, so this is my location. So that's it. I'm now going to click on next. And here I'm going to just give it a name. Let's say deployment mode security. Now, there is a very specific reason behind using tags and the moment uh, we will start Azure resource graph uh, playlist, you'll come to know why this tagging is very important because uh, there is enormous amount of uh, filtering, uh, practically speaking, which can be done while you're writing queries and you can have some really efficient dashboard to get very, very fine grained insights. Okay. That's it. Now I'm going to click on next. And as you can see, the moment I'll click on create, my workspace will be created. But there is one more thing which I would like to show you. And that is in both of these two consoles, be it basic or tag, there was no option for selecting the pricing tier. But the moment we are on this particular stage of actually creating a workspace, you can see pay as you go is selected. Now this is by design behavior. You cannot choose a commitment tier while creating a workspace. That is something that you have to change once a workspace is created. So that's it. I'm going to click on create. Now the moment this workspace is created, I'm just going to resume the video. Perfect. So now my workspace is created and I can just click on this option of go to resource. And as you can see, it is inside the resource group that we have selected and then it has a default pricing tier which is pay as you go it has the tag that we have selected okay now the next thing that i would like to talk about is configuration of commitment tier which is basically a kind of commitment in terms of making sure that you are going to ingest a specific amount of data now it is exceptionally important for you to do a capacity building uh, kind of uh, framework before you go ahead and make any change over here because the moment you make this change uh, the charges uh, will be applied and for all obvious reasons 
it's very important for you to be very specific about which commitment tier you are going to choose now when i will be talking about sentinel i'll tell you how you can plan or, or how you can choose one of these depending upon the number of resources you have for example how many routers switches or firewalls or how many servers you are having which will be ingesting data to a workspace altogether but for now for this particular video just look at this particular section of usage and estimated cost and keep this as a reference point that this is a section from which you will be customizing the pricing tier and as i said before pay as you go is the one which is selected by default now the next thing that i would like to talk about is more over related to cost okay now there is no upfront cost for creating a workspace you will only be charged when you start ingesting data to a workspace or precisely you will only be charged for the data which is ingested in log analytics workspace now you are also charged based on the retention period that you choose now what do i mean by this that let me come back to my browser and let me just type here data retention charges for log analytics workspace okay and if i click on this one what you can see that there are specifically you know charges associated uh, with the type of retention that you choose now anyways i'm going to cover this in a lot more detail but this was just for your information that it all depends that for how long you are choosing interactive retention period to be available for a workspace or let's say basic log search queries see the it's all about the archival period that you are choosing okay so the first cost was related to the data ingestion and the other one is the retention period that you are choosing now again as i've said before region selection is very important even though you have resources in azure at times if you keep uh, things slightly more organized or let's say in the same region uh, be it your resource and the actual workspace where you will be ingesting data th that can help you save a lot of egress cost okay now there is something called daily cap which means that if that particular threshold is reached log analytics workspace will stop collecting data or there will be no data ingestion okay so setting up daily cap is only recommended when you are exceptionally sure that yes this is the amount of data that will be ingested and it is not going to cross that particular limit altogether now setting up daily cap is also very simple from the same console itself where it says usage and estimated cost you can click on this option of daily cap and as you can see from here i can enable or disable the daily cap and here i can define how many of how many gb of data let's say in a day will be ingested now some of the behavioral aspect which are related to daily cap whenever the threshold is reached the collection of data is stopped for that particular day okay now whenever a daily cap is reached a warning is shown on the azure portal as well as an event will be generated in the operations table of a log analytics workspace okay so this is the workspace which we have just created and if i go ahead and click on logs or let's say if i go ahead and click on tables i will see multiple tables getting listed over here wherein there will be a dedicated entry that will be available in this particular table if at all we reach the limit which we have uh, defined for daily cap now every workspace will have a reset time and this reset time will be different for each workspace okay let me come back to my browser and if i go to usage and estimated cost and if i click on daily cap you can see the moment i'm switching this on it is showing me a specific daily limit okay daily cap limit now one more thing which i would like to show you that this is something which cannot be changed okay first of all it will be different for all the workspace and secondly it cannot be changed okay so let me just make you read a short line and then things will make a lot more sense okay 
so let me just show you that particular aspect yeah you can see data collection resumes at the reset time which is a different hour for the day for each workspace this reset hour can't be configured okay now initially uh, there was some event type to be very precise which were related to microsoft sentinel and microsoft defender for cloud which were excluded from this particular daily cap but starting 18th september this year itself these exclusions are also removed okay now what do i mean by this that let's say if i go ahead and click on switch on just read this particular section and things will make a lot more sense until september 18th 2023 the collection of some security related data types for microsoft sentinel or microsoft defender for servers is not affected by the daily cap but then this has also been excluded and this is exactly what is mentioned over here okay starting september 18th 2023 let me scroll up sorry yeah let me zoom here okay the log analytics daily cap will no longer exclude the below set of data types and all billable data type will be capped if the daily cap is met okay and these are those particular data types which are associated to a specific table altogether now this is something which i've already shown but it is here in the deck the reset R for workspace is shown for each and every workspace it is shown but it cannot be changed okay so let's say if i show you a different workspace which is let's say this one uh, and that is sentinel and if i go ahead and click on this option and again click on daily cap and let's say if i switch on you can see it is 6 pm utc and for this one it is 4 pm udc okay now whenever you create a workspace there are some tables which are created by default and they have their own purpose okay so these are those six tables depending upon uh, the service that you are choosing but with this being said irrespective of the service type whenever you will create a workspace these tables will exist by default so this is the workspace which we have just created and if i go ahead and click on tables once again you can see i'm getting these six tables listed over here but there is one more aspect uh, you know which is available on this particular console and that is type which is azure table plan it is showing analytics and interactive retention is showing as workspace default 30 days now let's talk about what all these different things are okay let's start from data retention so the time frame for which your data will be saved in the workspace for example if you want to save your data for two years then the total retention period will be two years which means what there are two types of retentions which are available and if you combine both of them then the term which gets uh, associated is called total retention period so in a nutshell every workspace will have interactive retention and archival retention but if you'll combine those two time frames then that will be the total retention period for your data okay as well as each and every table that exists in a workspace has a plan associated with it and which is basic or analytics let me explain you this in a lot more detail and then things will make much more sense let's talk about what is interactive retention okay so the time frame for which data is available for interactive queries is called interactive retention whereas archival period or archival retention is typically used for compliance purpose or let's say once the data is archived or it is stored in archival to be very precise then it can only be retrieved either through search jobs or restore now if you combine these two period then that will be the total retention for a workspace okay now with this being said 
these two settings can be customized for each table okay these settings are this setting is available at the workspace level but when i talk about interactive retention as an option dedicated option and the archival period it is available for each and every table that exists in a workspace let me show you this and then things will make a lot more sense so this is the workspace security audit that we have just created and if i go to the section of usage and estimated cost and if i click on data retention you can see the default data retention period is around 30 days now irrespective of whatever value i choose here this setting will be inherited by all the tables inside this workspace and that too the field that will inherit the setting will be interactive retention okay before i make this change let me show you what exactly i'm trying to explain if i go to table section i can see interactive retention getting mentioned over here as workspace default which is 30 days okay now the reason behind this is because my workspace uh, retention is defined as 30 days okay now if I go ahead and change this, let's say if I change this to 90 days, okay? And if I come back to my table, give it some time, you can see now workspace default is now 90 days. And this entire configuration is inherited by the interactive re retention sec uh, setting itself. I mean, there is no change which we can see at the archival period time frame. So, in a nutshell, whatever retention period you are defining for your workspace, that will be inherited by all these tables and that time frame will be defined as interactive retention. Okay, now I can practically go ahead and click on uh, this option and then I can click on manage table and I can go ahead and make changes. So for example, if I go ahead and select this, you can see this is getting changed. Now, this is not uh, I mean, it's not an issue at times it takes, uh, let's say a couple of minutes to get it replicated at each and every console. But with this being said, uh, the retention period that has been selected for the workspace will become the interactive retention period for the specific table altogether. And from this particular section, which says total retention period, you can actually choose the remaining amount of archival period. Now, what do I mean by this? That let's say here I have selected 90 days, which is three months, and I want to save this data in archival, let's say for next six months. Okay, then I can just go ahead and select this option. Okay, 90 days of 180 days is actually archival period. Okay, so the total time frame for which the data will be retained is around six months okay out of which 90 days will be interactive retention and 90 days will be archival period if i select 270 days now you can see the archival period is around 180 days and interactive retention is around 90 days okay now there is one more option uh, that we see over here and that is analytics which is defined as a table plan now let's understand what exactly this table plan is all about so basically there are two type of table plans the very first one is basic and the other one is analytics if you choose any table to have basic plan then interactive retention can be uh, from it i mean it's a static value which is eight days and it can't be changed whereas the archival period can be for seven years okay so let me show you this on a table uh, you know where we can make this change so this is my other uh, workspace where i have made a lot of customization just to show you how exactly things are working and let me show you this customization in one of the custom table okay so let's say this is my table named as email event underscore cl and if i go ahead and click on manage table as you can see i can change this option okay now practically speaking uh, you will not be able to make this change on each and every table there is a limit for that as well 
so you have to be very specific about choosing this plan for a specific table altogether okay so let's say the moment i'll click on basic irrespective of what is selected at the workspace level the interactive retention period will get changed to eight days and i cannot change it whereas total retention period again is something that can be expanded till seven years okay now the next one is analytics plan uh, wherein the interactive retention period must be at least 30 days or let's say from 30 days up to two years and again the archival period can be for seven years so let's say if i go ahead and select this option of analytics since i'm using workspace default setting over here that's why it is 60 days i can uncheck this and select the least possible value for 30 days and the maximum amount is seven years okay and with this being said these settings can be customized for majority of the tables to be very precise let's say if i go ahead and click on manage table so you can see that for this particular table where it says aad non-interactive user sign in logs i don't have the privilege to change the table plan but i can change the retention period and with this being said both the retention period which includes interactive retention and archival and a table plan can be customized for each table or for majority of the table that exist in a workspace okay now this is uh, a snip that i have taken uh, from the official documentation of microsoft and most of the details i have already shown you but just a quick recap from an ingestion point of view from data ingestion point of view if you choose analytics table it is a regular ingestion cost whereas if you choose basic plan for a table there is a reduced ingestion cost log queries everything that is possible with the kql is available or let's say is applicable for the data which exists in a table which has analytics plan whereas if you have a table uh, where you have selected basic plan then all the kql queries can not be applied okay so yeah this is the documentation and as you can see it clearly highlights that queries with basic log are subjected to the following limitation which means what you cannot use for example join operator okay so if you have data which is saved in basic logs these are the only parameters which can be selected okay now the next thing that i would like to talk about is managing table schema and a portal walkthrough for multiple settings which are related to schema itself okay now i'll come back to my portal and let me open uh, the sentinel one because there we have a lot of uh, data available so that i can show you many more things okay so right now i'm inside a workspace uh, which has multiple tables and i can click on any of these tables or i can choose any of these tables and then i can click on this option and i can click on this option which says edit schema okay now see basically schema means the set of columns which are associated with a specific table altogether okay so these are all different columns that exist for this particular table but with this being said that uh, i can go ahead and add a custom column as well but then what you guys have to uh, you know look and uh, note that any column that i'm going to name here let's say i'm going to name it as sample and i'm going to give a description also as sample the column name will be something like this okay so let me zoom out and again go to the settings for this particular table and if i will scroll down you can see my column is added but the naming convention has changed and this is underscore cf as a suffix that will get added now this same concept is also applied when you create a custom table you see underscore cl okay 
you can see all these different tables which I have created manually through APIs I can I'm getting this suffix at the end okay so in a nutshell if you want you can go ahead and customize uh, the schema for a specific table altogether to choose some values let's say which are nested in different attributes so for example imagine uh, there is a field or there is a column which itself is having multiple values so you can extract one value from one of those columns and then save it to the other column just to have you know some great queries written this is one of the use case i will cover them in a lot more detail once we'll reach the stage of kql but this is just for your information if at all you want to customize the schema for any particular table this is where you have to come okay now from tables management perspective i think i have covered a manage table which is basically related to retention edit schema the next thing that i would like to talk about is create transformation okay and i want to use this particular table because i have already done a transformation now see in a nutshell editing a transformation or creating a transformation basically means that whether you want certain columns to be available or updated or you know combine mal values from multiple columns or just remove them okay so if at all you think that for certain tables there are certain columns which are not required okay then you can come to this particular console write your kql query and the moment you save your updated kql query the data ingestion pipeline itself will get updated and then these particular columns that you see over here i have added they will no longer be available okay so let me show you this in action okay so let's say this is my workspace and uh, i'm inside my workspace and here I'm going to access my table, which is AAD non-interactive sign in logs. Okay. Let me minimize these two consoles. Let me say that show me the data from last 30 days and just remove this limit. Okay. Now I made this change almost two weeks back. Okay. So two weeks back, I edited the transformation for this particular table wherein I have made this change that these columns should be removed. I think it was 9th of this month itself. But yes, that's all I can recall. Let's say if I scroll this towards right and search for duration MS, you can see this is something that I have removed and this field is not coming for now. The data is not getting populated and the same concept goes for app display name okay let me just uh, summarize this count uh, for a reference point okay and then you will be able to relate what exactly i'm trying to address here okay app display name and then you can see that these many are the count where the app display name does not exist okay or i can also show you duration ms and you can see it is uh, these many uh, counts where duration MS does not exist. Now, if I say three days, then I should only get this particular entry because duration MS has to be removed. And the same concept for app display name. You can see there is only one particular count. And that is for blank values. Okay. So the moment you make these changes to a specific table altogether, everything will get updated and the new data which is getting ingested will not have these values being pushed to the, to the table or ingested to the table altogether okay now there is a very specific reason why i am not covering this option of uh, manage access because that is the topic which is going to take around 30 minutes more and which is this particular section so i will be covering this once i'm done with ama but please make sure that you do watch that video because i'm going to cover something which is not easily available on the documentation itself okay
Now, the next thing that I would like to talk about is monitoring health for a workspace. So if at all there is any issue uh, with your workspace itself, then you will see a lot of highlights coming here as well as you will also get a notification email and a notification on the Azure portal itself. But with this being said, you can just come to this particular console and monitor if at all there are any health issues. Okay. Now, with this being said, these these are several examples uh, you know which will be shown so for example if there is any latency uh, which is happening for a specific workspace altogether then this is how the alert will be generated and a dedicated pdf document will be available on the portal itself which you can go ahead and review now the last thing that i would like to talk about is deletion of a workspace whenever a workspace is deleted stays in soft delete state for almost 14 days so if you choose the same name and provided you have already ingested some data then that particular workspace will be restored for you okay so as you can see here i'm getting this option of delete the workspace permanently let's say if i have selected this option then there will be no concept of soft delete but with this being said every workspace that you're going to delete will be there let's say in the staging mode or let's say in the soft delete state uh, for 14 days and then it will be removed so this was all about knowing most of the concepts related to workspace altogether let's talk about a quick summary we have discussed about commitment tiers cost retention settings schema as well as the monitoring aspect of a workspace itself and a complete portal walkthrough for most of the settings which are available for a workspace now since we know what is a workspace all about the next video or let's say from the next video i'm going to get started with data collection rule and azure monitor agent and we'll get initiated i mean we'll get started with uh, uh, the installation of uh, these agents on Windows and Linux machine and see how the data ingestion is happening. And after that, we'll switch to Sentinel. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Show us some support. Join the support membership as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.